Craig, I know LeBron spoke yesterday, just wondering now, uh, two days after the game, how you felt like he responded physically and, and what the plan would be minutes-wise and just how you want to use him tonight. And the back-to-back, I should say. Yep, uh, had some general soreness uh, overall in his body because he hadn't played in a while or, or practiced, um, but came through pretty well. And, uh, you know, we'll have a similar plan for him than we had the other night. Yep. Frank, what did the tape look like for you and the halves in, in terms of mix of effort versus scheme and switching versus dropping? And how did that look in, in New York? And how can that inform today's uh, lineups and rotations and such? Yeah, I mean, we just had a better disposition in the in the second half. And, you know, I, I think our offense was better. Uh, it, oh, I mean, I know our offense was better, but it, our offense being better contributed to getting our defense set uh, more in the second half. Uh, too many... Um, you know, just unrecoverable situations in transition defense in the first half of that next game that, you know, allowed them to get easy looks on the break, you know, and, uh, you know, we spotted them 9-0, and I think they they ultimately had five transition threes in the in the first quarter. So um, better offensive possessions allowed us to get our defense set more. Frank, just as kind of a matter of housekeeping, you said yesterday that uh, Kendrick is still not close to really starting that ramp up, 28 games left. Is it possible that he doesn't play this season? At, or And is how realistic is it for you guys to sort of plan on him being part of you guys as a whole? Yeah, I mean, anything's possible. Uh, we are hopeful that he plays for us this year. Um, you know, he, he did have a follow-up exam recently. I'm not sure exactly which date. And, um, you know, we are able to say now that, you know, he's likely not going to be back before March. And um, But, you know, we're still optimistic that he plays for us this year. Did that follow-up exam reveal anything beyond the bone bruise? Or is no. it okay? Yeah, it's just yeah. Um Giannis is is one of the most unique sort of offensive players in the league at his size and his ability to get downhill. But you guys have a guy in Anthony that sort of seems like physically at least and certainly skill set fits about how do you kind of decide whether to to, to use AD kind of in a more uh, a straight matchup or versus like bring him over and help because he's such a good help defender as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to use him in both in both ways. Obviously, um, you know, it's difficult to guard Giannis, you know, as an exclusive matchup and stay out of foul trouble. Um, you know, so we'll have multiple guys on him. But, uh, you know, we want to use AD in both ways, you know, his ability to contain the basketball and use his length, uh, but also in help side situations as well. Hey, Frank, Gian- Giannis has been a, a great player for a while now, but is there anything this season that you've noticed where it feels like he's taken this game to another level? And if so, what have you seen? I don't know. He's he's pretty elite at everything. So <laughs> he's been that way for a couple of years. I don't know if there's a huge difference between this year and, and, and the last two years. Um, you know, he's just extremely dynamic. He, I think he continues to improve his shooting each year, and getting more comfortable out there. But, um, you know, he's dominant in all ways. Frank, I know it's not about one-on-one matchups for the team, but when you think about how AD played against Joel and Bede, are, are you kind of hopeful that, in a way, there's some some motivation to to take some of these matchups a little personally personally for AD and, and see some of the fire that we've seen from him lately? Yeah, I mean, I just didn't want AD to keep playing the way he's playing. He's playing with great determination, no matter who's in front of him. You know, I, I don't think it should be about, you know, trying to take on an individual ma- individual matchup. You know, it's about, it's a team game, you know, and you got to you gotta win the game as a team. You know, I mean, I think AD had more points than Embiid, but we lost the game, you know. So um, I just think AD is playing with uh, a great deal of determination, and uh, I'm sure we'll, see, we'll continue to see that tonight. Frank, Talon has you know, been back with you guys for a bit without any injury. Um, you know, he had the thumb and he had COVID, but uh, what what do you make of his production, particularly offensively? Um, his shot totals, Some sometimes you see three or four um, for a guy who it seemed to be earned his contract with you guys this past summer based on this showing this scoring knack last season. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Talon's... Um, you know, touches and opportunities have been inconsistent. That's not to say he's he's been inconsistent. There has been t- some nights where the ball finds him a lot more than others, you know, and, uh, you know, I do ultimately believe that Talon is someone that you can put the ball in his in his hands for um, for long stretches or with, with certain units, and you, he can really deliver for you. 
uh, with this team, he's he's off off the ball and, and in a secondary scoring role, um, you know, probably too much, you know, for him to be, uh, you know, to get to get the most out of him. But, you know, that's just the nature of how our team is built. So um, we want him to continue to uh, just be aggressive in those those opportunities. Yeah, a, a quick follow up on Kendrick. Um, maybe it's because we haven't actually seen him with your team at all this season, but um, c- can you kind of explain sort of what your vision was for him and, and what role ideally he would have played with this team and, and kind of the the gap that's been left um, because you guys haven't had him? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, Bron's a unique player. So, you know, calling him up any type of position is – you know, I mean, he plays all positions, but he he he's a ball handler. But Kendrick coming in and playing backup point guard, um, you know, to Russ, you know, in terms of guarding the other team's smallest player, handling some, you know, bringing it up in the open court if Braun is playing with the second unit, um, but also just being a, you know, a backside shooter and playmaker, you know, similar to what Malik Monk has given us, um, you know, is a similar type of role, uh, you know, seeing the two of those guys together out there. You know, where, um, you know, Braun, Russ, they can give the ball to, to, to Kendrick and, you know, create in a pick and roll game or off of pin downs. And, uh, you know, he's a dynamic basket attacker. Uh, but also when when they have the ball, you know, he's a, he's a knockdown three-point shooter as well. You know, so he's one of those guys that can really play with and without the basketball. And, you know, we did have him, you know, penciled in as a, you know, as a main rotational guy. Will, will Mello and Dwight, go with you to Portland tonight? And is it possible that they could play in the second half of back-to-back? Melo's going to be out tomorrow night. Um, I'm pretty sure he's traveling. Um, and then Dwight will be questionable for tomorrow. Hey, Frank. I'm wondering if there are any ways this season in which Malik has surprised you. Not really. You know, uh, I've answered this question a few different times this year. You know, I, I personally had a high uh, opinion of his game. And, um, you know, I know he's flammable, you know, he can really, really catch fire. And uh, he's done that throughout his career, throughout his life, you know, all the way back to Kentucky. And, um, you know, we knew that, you know, that type of score around this type of talent we have on his team could be really dynamic. So I had high expectations for him. So it hasn't really been a surprise to me, but you know, something, to, you know, I'm definitely pleased with how he's playing. Hey, coach. Um I know the record says one thing, but are games like this with competition as good as the Milwaukee Bucks, are these good barometers for you guys, record being one thing, but playing against a team like this? Yeah, yes and no. You know, I, I think it's it's difficult to read into any single regular season game in the NBA, um, you know, win or lose. But, you know, you do want to uh, measure yourself against the best, and these guys are the champs. You know, they don't have the – the best regular season record this year. They've, they've dealt with a lot of injuries like we have, but, um, you know, they have their big three back and they're playing really good basketball and um, and they are still the champs. So um, you do measure, you know, where you're at as a team against that. But again, not, not reading too much into any single NBA game. 